Ever wonder if there was a way to add a Google map to an Adobe InDesign layout? Well, there is, and today I'm gonna to show you how to embed one into a digital publishing project. In this lesson, we'll focus on how to use insert HTML, add custom Google map sizes, and set up an interactive experience so viewers can navigate through multiple maps with button interactivity. So let's jump right into this lesson and start creating. All right, I have my contact page here for this fictional company called Sprightly, which has three offices globally, one in Los Angeles, one in Toronto, and one in New York. And above these text frames, I have three icons, three map markers, which will convert to buttons later on. Now you notice down here, I left some space. This is where we'll place the Google Maps. Now I'm gonna show you how to add one of them first, and then we'll add two others and use these buttons to create an interactive menu so we can click through and change these maps as we go through. Now, before I add the map, I wanna add a placeholder frame here in this space that I've left. So I'm just gonna click on the rectangle frame tool and then click anywhere on the page. And the width of this will be the width of the page, which is 768 pixels. Just hit tab on your keyboard. And in the height field, type in 244 pixels, hit tab again. And so your, your size here should be 768 pixels by 244. Go ahead and click OK. There's our placeholder frame. And I'm just gonna position it so the top is snapped to this object, this shape here. And just leave enough space between the title, keep track of your deliveries. Leave enough space there so it's not, it's not so tight. So that will be the size of our Google Map. Once you have that in place, now we can go ahead to a uh, web browser of your choice, either Chrome or Safari, whatever you typically use. So I'm gonna open my browser here. I went ahead and searched the first city, which will be Los Angeles. Once the map is loaded, go ahead and click this share button. Now, typically you would probably just copy the link or share it on social, but we want to embed a map. So go ahead and click that. As a default, the size of the map will be set to medium. Now, if I Click this little drop down. There's also a small and large option, but we want to choose custom size. And remember, we set that placeholder frame. Let's set the map the same size. So that was 768. Hit tab or just click this field here. And that was 244. You can preview the actual size. So if you see here, it's a wide map and that's exactly what we want. So we can close that. And then we could copy the HTML. You could see it here. Just click that button. We've copied it. Let's go back to InDesign. And this is the trick on how to get that code into an InDesign document. Make your way up to object and then choose insert HTML. That'll open up this dialog box where you can paste the code into this window. So I'm just going to do command V and there's the code, the custom code with the size 768 by 244. And I'm gonna click OK. Now it may take a couple seconds if nothing is happening. So see, nothing's happening there. Well, it popped in and I'll show you, I'll show you a trick if it doesn't pop in. I'm just gonna delete my placeholder here and position that exactly where that placeholder was. Now here's the thing, the map will not appear on the page, so it will be a blank frame like you're seeing here. If I open up an interactive window and test it out by clicking the preview spread EPUB, let's, let's have a look. You can see that the map is in fact there and it's live. So I can move it around, I can zoom in, it works. However, it's not appearing here. So just to be, just to be safe, what I typically do is just grab a guide and place it at the bottom of that frame. So this way I know where that, where the map ends. Okay. And it takes a little bit of the guesswork out as well. Now I'm going to click that. I'm going to go to my layers panel and right now it's just called pasted HTML. I'm going to call this Los Angeles map. Okay. And so our first one is in, what I'm gonna do now is go and create the other two. So let's do Toronto next. I can close this here and let's search Toronto. 
And again, there's no specific address. I'm just doing a generic map here. Again, I'm going to click share, go to embed map, and we want to create the custom size of 768 by 244. Okay. And then you can copy that HTML. Let's go back to InDesign and let's go to object, insert HTML, and then paste that code in and click OK. Now again, let's let's wait a couple seconds. That one popped in as well. So that's good. I'm going to see if the third one pops in. If not, I'm still going to show you the trick on how to make it appear because oftentimes you saw that uh, snippet little message there. Sometimes it doesn't appear. So you almost have to do it again for it to appear the map. So let's go to our layers panel. And again, this one's called pasted HTML as a default. So just click in there and this one's Toronto map. Now I want to position that under Los Angeles map. Okay. So we want Los Angeles, Toronto, and now we're going to create the New York version. So I'm back in Google maps and close that. And this one will just be New York. Just hit return. Perfect. Let's click share embed a map. Let's create a custom size of 768 by 244. And of course, you would create the size of your choice. This is what I'm working on for this tutorial. Let's copy that HTML and let's go back to InDesign. I'm just clicking on the pasteboard just to be sure that I'm not clicked in pasting that and anything else. Let's go to object, insert HTML and paste that in and click OK. So it says this is an HTML snippet and the third one did pop in. If it does not pop in, and all you see is that edit snippet, or this is an uh, HTML snippet, right click and then go to edit HTML, delete the code, paste it again and click OK. It's almost like you're giving it a little nudge to, to move, move on. In this version here, it seemed to all work properly, but oftentimes it hangs a little bit. So that's how you would get around that. Right click, edit HTML, delete the code, paste it in again, and then hit OK, and then it, it will appear. So I'm going to go to my layers panel again, and let's call this New York map. Perfect. Now I'm just going to move that third one to the bottom. So we want these to be in the same order as we see here and as people will click them. So LA, Toronto, New York. Good. Now that I have all those in place, I'm going to show you how to create them into an object state, multi-state object, and then set these to buttons. So this becomes an interactive menu experience. All right. For this next part, we'll need the object states panel as well as buttons and forms. And to access those, go to window interactive and we want object states and buttons and forms. Now I already have mine open. What I'm going to do is select all three of these maps. And you'll know that they're all selected because if you look in the layers panel, the indicator lights are on, so they're activated. And I'm going to go to my object states. Let me just tear that off. I'll just minimize those. And once you have these selected, go ahead and click convert selection to multi-state object. Once I click that, you can see that all three maps are on different states. Now let's just name this object name to Google maps. Okay. And the first one we know is Los Angeles. So I'm going to rename that state Los Angeles. The second state is New York and I'm sorry, it's Toronto. So go ahead and rename it Toronto. And the last one is New York. So click that and just name it New York. This way, when you're setting up the button interactivity, you're also taking the guesswork out in terms of which state is which. Now, because we've renamed them, we know which state uh, is the map, the corresponding map. And that's helpful because we can't see the map on the page. So this is an extra step that will help you set this up. So I'm going to click on this first map marker here and let's open the buttons and forms panel. I'm just going to group it with object states. And I have that first one selected. I'm just going to zoom in here. And in the buttons and forms panel, let's convert that to a button and let's call this Los Angeles map button. 
okay? And in the action here, let's choose go to state. Now you can see the object name. It's the only multi-state object in this document. So there it is, Google Maps. And the state that we want that button to trigger is Los Angeles. Now I do wanna add a rollover and click appearance states to this. And so I'll just click rollover. I'll double click. I'm gonna open my swatches panel and I have a bright blue color here that I'm gonna apply. And then I'm gonna click on the click appearance, double click to drive into that and give it the same blue. This is important if you're viewing this on an iPad or a mobile device, the rollover appearance won't work. But when I click it, the this will remain blue. Now I'm just gonna click back on normal. That one is set up. Let's move on to Toronto. I'm gonna click on the map marker icon here and convert that to a button. And this will be called Toronto map button. And the action again is go to state. The object is Google Maps, but the state has to be Toronto, which will trigger the Toronto map. Let's click rollover, double click to drive into that button for the rollover appearance. Give it that bright blue color here. Click on the click appearance, and then go ahead and double click again and give it the same blue color, okay? And let's go back to normal. Perfect, we have one more here and that's New York. So click that and convert that to a button. And this will be called New York map button. And the action here is also go to state. The object is Google Maps, but the state here is that last one, New York. Go ahead and click the rollover appearance, double click and give it the blue color. Click on the click appearance double click the map marker and give it the blue color again. Perfect, now you can go back to normal and you can see that they do have normal rollover and click appearance states applied. Now let's test this out. You can test it out in your EPUB preview window. If I click that, that'll launch this window again and I can hover over these, that works. I'm gonna click Toronto and there's Toronto and there's New York. And again, these are live, so you can scroll through them or drag. You can zoom in, out, which is great. Next, let me show you how to publish the project online and view it in a web browser. Now to share this online, go ahead and click the share button in the upper right hand corner and let's choose publish online. Give your project a title. This is called Google Maps. So it's, it's the same title as the document name and you can fill out the description and some other details if you want. Go ahead and click publish. I'm gonna hit cancel because I've already published a version. So I'll just open it up here in my web browser. And you can see if I'm testing them out, the hover appearance works. So I'll click Toronto, there's Toronto, there's New York. And you can scroll through and you can pan around on the map, zoom in, zoom out. And so those work. Next, let me take you through the steps on how to export the project as an EPUB fixed layout and view it in an e-reader such as Apple Books. Now to do that, make your way up to File and Export. And in the Format dropdown, just make sure that you're set to EPUB fixed layout and that will preserve all the text, the layout and the geometry as you have it set up on your page. So go ahead and click that and then you would hit save. I'm gonna hit cancel and I'll show you now how it looks in Apple Books using an iPad. All right, I've opened the document in Apple Books on my iPad. I'm gonna click on Toronto. You can see if I hold Toronto map marker, it remains blue and there's the map. Same with New York. And if I click on Los Angeles, there's Los Angeles, Toronto. And if I'm using two fingers, I can pinch to zoom out, pinch to zoom in and pan around. You can see that the, the map is live and it works perfectly using Apple Books or an e-reader of your choice. Of course, it has to support HTML5 because that's what this runs on. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to embed Google Maps into an Adobe InDesign project. If you found this video helpful, leave a like or comment below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified when new video lessons are uploaded. 
If you'd like to learn more about digital publishing and interactive design, check out this playlist right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.